Hey guys, I'm back doing a video that I did not think I was going to be doing. While I was away from YouTube, I read a whole bunch of books. Um, so many, in fact, that it wasn't worth it to review them, or so I thought. But it turns out I really want to talk about those books, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. And what is going on with my light here? It's like, woo! Anyways, so I'm not going to go through all 50 of them today, obviously, but I'm going to go through quite a few. So let's go ahead and get started. The very last book I read is called Mistborn, The Final Empire. It is part of the Mistborn series, book number one. Now, the Mistborn series is very complicated, and I'm not going to be able to do it justice explaining it now. So just keep that in mind, but I'm going to do my best. The most interesting part of the Mistborn series is the magic system. In this world, there are some people, not all people, some people are born with Alimantic abilities. They can have one Alimantic ability or all 12. There's no in between. If you do have an Alimantic ability, it is paired with a specific metal. You have to have that metal, swallow it, burn it, and then you can use that Alimantic ability. When you have burned up all your metal and you are out, you can no longer use that power. The people who have all 12 are extremely rare and sought after, and they're thought to be nearly indestructible because their powers are just so awesome. Um, so in this world, a bunch of people who do have abilities team up to overthrow the final empire, which is basically the government. Though this government is more difficult to overthrow than probably anything you've ever read about because the ruler is not the king, he's actually their god and he's immortal and has been on the throne for about 2,000 years. The people worship him like a god, but he treats them like crap. Um, the nobility are very, very noble and have balls and parties and they're beyond extravagant. Their slaves are called the Ska and they're the normal people who can be beaten and killed and raped with impunity. I mean, they are not even thought to be human. So this is obviously a huge disparity, not good. They want to overthrow the government but they cannot do it without a whole bunch of superpowers and this huge big plan that's crazy and probably not going to work, but they're going to try anyway. So that's where the final empire starts off. The characters in it, I can't start to do them justice, so I'm not going to try, but there's quite a few of them. They're all very distinct and lovely and together they're even better. Um, I just, I just love them. And by the way, Alamancers, or the people with Alamantic abilities, are only one of the kind of people that have magic or special powers in this world. I cannot go into all of them, but they're very cool. Every time you learn about a new one, it's so intriguing and wonderful and awesome. And um, Brian, Brandon Sanderson, who's the writer of Final Empire, probably should have mentioned that earlier. But anyways, Brandon Sanderson does a really good job of creating the world and the magic system and I just I'm on book two right now and it's pretty good so far um it's almost as good as the first one so far I'm not that far into it but I anticipate it will be really good as well I gave the Mistborn Final Empire a five stars out of five I really 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 liked it and I would recommend it to absolutely everyone if you haven't read a book in 10 years, if you don't think you like fantasy, if you don't think you like anything political, if you don't think you like fighting, give Final Empire Mist or the Mistborn series, give the Mistborn series a chance because you may be wrong. You're probably wrong. You're probably going to like Mistborn. Um, the book I read right before that is called This is Sadie. It's a picture book and I really like it. It's so cute. So this is what the cover looks like. This is Sadie. And she's just a really inventive little girl who's got a huge imagination. She loves to read. She loves foxes. There's little hidden things in all the pictures. Here she's playing with some of her friends from her favorite books. She's inside one of her fairy tales. 
it's just such a sweet book. The pictures, the illustrations are just so well done and so sweet and they they seem very magical and I am a sucker for illustrations. I know this, we know this, but my children really, really love this book too. She's just so cute and imaginative and she loves to read and she doesn't really let anything get in her way. My children are aged four and six and since we brought this book home from the library, they wanted to read it just about every day. Um, the other books in the library have all kind of been pushed aside in favor of This is Sadie because they just really love her. And I love to read the book. It's really fun to read out loud. So I've been, we've just been reading that. So I would give it a five stars out of five and would buy it for children everywhere. On the book, the graphic novel I read before that is called Night of 1000 Wolves. I read it on my iPhone, so I don't have it with me, but it's basically the premise of the graphic novel in three parts is the stars have aligned the wolves know this and they're coming out of the wolves to take vengeance against this group of people because years and years ago um, their ancestors made some sort of deal with the wolves and now they're coming back to take what is theirs to get vengeance and things like that um it's three books of that running away from wolves and try not to get eaten and stuff we don't really get to know any of the characters and it just wasn't my cup of tea I don't really like it. I gave it two stars out of five. But if you like action for the sake of action and that's all you're looking for, then you probably would like Night of a Thousand Wolves. The book I read right before that is a mid-grade book. I got it from the library and have since returned it, so I don't have it with me. It's called Echo. The book is told in three parts. There's three different children who all have their stories. Their stories are told in their entirety and then it stops and then the next children has their turn for their story told in its entirety and stops and so on. At the very end they sort of, their stories intertwine. <sighs> it is both the thing I loved about the book and the reason that I didn't give it five stars. Um, so we start off with Friedrich. He, he lives in Germany and it's right when Hitler has taken power and he's starting to really assert himself and change a lot of things and no one really knows exactly what's going on but they know that it's not good they know neighbors are running against each other and poor little Friedrich is in the middle of this just wanting everyone to get along. He doesn't really understand it but he's affected by it anyway. So we go along with his story and it gets right up to the climax and we're like oh no what's gonna happen? I'm so excited to find out and scared at the same time and then no no more his story is ended. Then we go to Pennsylvania and we meet Mike who is an orphan has grown up in an orphanage. He's got a little brother he's got to take care of. Um, he's just wanting a family. It's all he wants. He's a sweet little boy. And we go through his story and we get all the way so it's like, yes, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? And then it stops. And then we go to Ivy from California and she, her family moves to this farm to take care of it while the owners are away because the owners are Japanese and all the Japanese people were rounded up and put into these work camps which because the children in the book don't really understand what's going on the way they describe the concentration camps in Germany the way that they describe the work camps in America are almost identical and I think that was on purpose and good job author thank you thank you because I've always thought it was weird that we like make Germany out to be so horrible when we did sort of the same thing Just saying. Anyways, we get all the way to Ivy's climax and we're like, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? And it stops. <laughs> and then at the very end, they all kind of, their lives intertwine. It's very sweet and magical and whatever. We sort of figure out what happened with the children, but not really. It's very, we're not on the roller coaster ride with them anymore, like biting your nails, like gritting your teeth. What's gonna happen? I'm so excited and invested in the story. It's sort of an afterthought I'm like oh yeah by the way this is what happened and it's I, for me it seemed to take away that moment that I really look forward to as a reader and even though the book was wonderful and I really liked all the characters and the stories the fact that, that moment was taken away from me I'm a little bit bitter about it <laughs> so I gave it four stars out of five 
So before so before Echo, I read Nimona, which I've already done a review on my channel about it, but this is the cover. I gave Nimona a 5 stars out of 5. I really, really loved it. I'm going to link the review down below if you want to find out more about it. It's just very sweet and well done and exciting and the characters are lovely and it's just so wonderful. You should read it. It's a graphic novel. By the way, before I read Nimona, I read This One Summer, which is also a graphic novel. It follows Rose, who is just starting puberty. She goes on, she goes with her family to their summer cabin. Um, and she's interested in the teenagers and their dramas and their lives, but she's not really old enough to hang out with the teenagers yet. So she's just sort of on the outskirts listening in to the gossip and she's sort of invested in their lives, but they don't really know who she is. Um, her best friend there is younger than her, so she, her best friend doesn't really understand either. So Rose is kind of like caught in this weird middle ground of being like 12 years old. Um, and then meanwhile, her parents are having problems, her mom's really depressed, her dad's mad about it, and, you know, she just has a lot of drama. It is a very slow, it's, it is a pretty slow-moving graphic novel, but it is very sweet and enduring, and it does have a very good message to it. So if you like that kind of thing, you'd probably like This One Summer. Before This One Summer, I read Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. Um, the premise of it is there's a whole bunch of beauty queens going to a pageant in the same plane, the plane crashes on an island and these girls have to figure out how to survive on their own. After the first two chapters, I was like, why did I do this to myself? This book is going to be horrible. Because even though it was a little bit tongue in cheek and a little bit, it was obviously meant to be annoying. Some of the characters were meant to be annoying. When you have so many characters and every single one of them is annoying, it started to kind of grate on me. But it turned out that was actually a very important part of the story because as it progresses, the girls grow and learn things. And to see that progression against the very stark backdrop of how they were when they first got to the island, it was pretty cool. There's a lot of social commentary. There's a lot of feminist thought in the book, which I was... I just agreed with everything they said and I think it needs to be said louder and I really liked it because of that but if the first few chapters are grating on you, if you pick up Beauty Queens, just push through it. It's supposed to be that way. Just, it'll get really funny, trust me. I gave Beauty Queens a 4 stars out of 5. The last book I'm going to talk about today, I read before Beauty Queens and that's called Fifth, The Fifth Wave by Ricky Yancey. I gave The Fifth Wave 3 stars out of 5. I really like the premise for it, for the book, which is basically aliens come down to earth, they want to wipe out all the humans, Cassie is left in all this, she's trying to find her brother, um, she's very worried about him, because obviously there's aliens everywhere and they're separated and she's got to find her little brother. Um, there's a lot of confusion, we don't really know what's going on, and that's part of the fun of the fifth wave, so I don't want to give too much away. I thought the plot was pretty solid. But the character development was not quite there for me. I thought everyone was pretty predictable and even the backstories were also a little bit stale and obvious. So because of that, I, I was a little bit let down. So I ended up giving it a 3 stars out of 5. If you are more of a plot driven reader, you'll probably like this a lot more than I did. That is about it. That's all I'm going to talk about today. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up or subscribe and comment below let me know if you like these sorts of videos you know it'd be helpful to know if people actually enjoy these ones or enjoy this one and you know i'm just sort of floundering around on youtube right now and we'll figure it out eventually but the end